Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to talk with Eric, who is the author uh, of the proof of work, the news, and also he's the co-founder of the Primitive Ventures. So today we're going to talk about the proof of work and proof of capacity and one of the projects from proof of capacity that is MassNet. Uh, okay, so welcome, Eric. Uh, so the first question will be, um, when do you start to pay attention on the proof of capacity? I heard about the idea of using storage kind of like as a proof of work type of substitute from uh, from Bram Cohen, who was one of the inventors of BitTorrent, and on this coin called Chia. And so mm -hmm. he kind of explained the basic idea to me, um, and it sounded interesting. And then after that, I met the uh, the Space Mesh folks through uh, my partner, Debbie Wan. And they're a team mostly based out of Israel that's working on this stuff. And then, yeah, I guess after that, I met these folks that are working on uh, that are working on Mass, which is another really interesting proof of capacity project. Uh, the next question will be: um, What do you think about the biggest difference between proof of capacity and the proof of works? Um, the biggest difference. I mean, so I think I think it's a lot of these systems. It's really hard to predict what they'll look like in production until they get big. Like no one really predicted Bitcoin mining would look the way it looks now when everyone was just mining on computers at home. But yeah, I mean, so I'm not, I'm not sure what proof of capacity is going to look like at scale. What I think is interesting about it is that at the moment, um, it is likely to be sort of less centralizing than proof of work in that, you know, mm -hmm. people can just mine from their home setups using uh, some hard drive, some hard drive space that they have. I think in the long term, it's unclear whether it will be less centralized. I mean, you know, if, if some manufacturer of hard drives like uh, Western Digital or something decided to just mine with all of their, you know, idle stock or whatever, or if Amazon just uses like all of S3 unused stock to, uh, to mine a proof of capacity coin. But I do think it's cool. I mean, it doesn't actually bother me about Bitcoin that mining is centralized. I think that's not as big of a deal as people think it is. It does kind of suck though, because like people just like, people like mining stuff. People like being like involved in a project in a way that is more yeah. than just buying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like to the extent that it's kind of a community thing, it's yeah. cool. Like it's cool to be able to just boot up a miner and start mining. And like, I think that does help build community. And I think it is kind of a bummer that you like can't really home mine Bitcoin anymore. We know uh, there's a project, Mass, that have got uh, some attention. Uh, what do you think about this project? I, I started looking at this project because uh, what, what got my attention was that most projects are really centralized. You know, the teams are often, in my opinion, I don't want to say greedy, but like the teams kind of are short-sighted. And so they're taking like huge stakes. So maybe they'll pre-mine like, you know, 50% of the coins or whatever. You see a lot of these projects that kind of just feel scammy. Um, when I saw this, this thing mass, I was like, it's actually really interesting because the other proof of storage coins, uh, they all have pretty significant pre-mines. Um, and I'm not, you know, I don't think pre-mines are necessarily bad. Canshake had a pre-mine for investors of like 7.5%, right? So it's like when it's a really small amount and maybe it's to get the project started or something, I can understand that. Um, in general, though, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of pre-mines, and it was really interesting to see, okay, these guys are doing this project that has no pre-mine at all. Um, and when I started talking to the people that were involved with it, it seemed like there was a lot of people that were like early miners of Bitcoin, and they were starting to mine this new coin as well. Um, and from a technical perspective, it looked really good, you know, everything's open source. Um, that kind of got my attention. And, and since then, I've just been kind of watching it, and it's and no one knows about this project in the, in the U.S. I mean, I don't know anyone that's, that's seen it. You know, all the funds that invested in Chia are in space mesh. I've like never heard of this thing. And, but there's not like, you know, there's, there's a mining pool, I think, that's come up around it called Mass Cafe. And mm -hmm. I've seen them do some like kind of promotional stuff. But the actual project creators themselves have been not really doing any promotion. They kind of just put the code out there and let it run. Um, so it's been, it's been really interesting. It, it, it's, it's much more of like a kind of hardcore crypto project than you see from most, uh, from most of these Chinese crypto projects. Uh, so the next question is, oh, there's uh, many big VC is to invest uh, proof of capacity already. Mm, what do you think mm, there's thoughts behind the investments? I can't really speculate on other people's investment. I think one of the things that a lot of people have talked about is that they're kind of shooting for what they think will be the next Bitcoin. So they see some scalability issues with Bitcoin. They see, you know, they, they don't like that Bitcoin uses a lot of power or whatever. And they think of something as kind of like, this is maybe the next Bitcoin. I don't, I don't really love that. I think, you know, often that's, that's kind of a misguided way to invest. And I, I do like that mass uh, really hasn't, from what I've seen, I mean, from the, the, the stuff that I've seen, they're not pushing themselves as the next Bitcoin. What they're basically saying is, look, here's like a different way to do consensus. It's a, it's a fairly efficient way to do consensus. You know, it, it should have pretty solid security if there's a lot of people involved in the process. 
um, here's this cool thing we made it, you know, I kind of like that. Like, I think that's a great attitude for a crypto project is like, instead of coming out of the, the gate with a ton of huge claims, they're just like, Hey, look, we made this cool thing. Here's how it works. Here's all the docs. Here's the code. Uh, come play with it. And, and people have gotten excited about that. And it's what's crazy. It's not even listed on any exchanges as far as I can tell, but there's these like groups of Chinese people on WeChat that are trading, uh, like OTC. What do you think? Centralized or everybody can money at home? I hope it doesn't get too centralized too fast. I'm curious what you think, I guess. I, I don't really see any obvious reason why it wouldn't eventually become centralized the way mining does. I would be pretty surprised if, in the end of the, if at the end of the day, we don't see most of the hash power still coming from these pretty large installations. If you can make money doing something, you can make more money by doing it you know, more efficiently, and you're going to see people coming yeah. in as Okay, so next question is, um, you know, there's many projects that do in the proof of works uh, and the staking together. Yeah, what do you think about that like this? I don't have anything against it. I think it's fine. I mean, again, Decred does this too. It's like there's like proof of capacity. And then also, if you stake some coins, then like your proof of capacity is more efficient. Right? I think it's fine. I mean, I think it incents people to hold the coin, which I guess is good. But I don't have any strong opinion on that one way or the other. Okay. Uh, can you sharing about uh, the primitive uh, ventures uh, are going to do something uh, in the proof of capacity? I mean, we're, we're, we're looking at mass very carefully. I think it's really interesting. I think, I mean, so what I would say about this, thinking a little more about this, what I would say is the reason, one of the reasons I like um, in this situation, like in the really, really nasty situation where like governments around the world are shutting down proof of work, um, you know, Bitcoin is illegal or whatever, like all these things, like Bitcoin's not going to die, right? Like you're going to see... If, if China makes it fully illegal, then like America is going to have some mining or whatever. There's always mm -hmm. going to be pockets of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But with proof of work, it's a lot easier to detect that someone has a big proof of work farm. I mean, it's putting off a lot of heat. It's taking a lot of power. Whereas proof of capacity seems a little bit easier to like hide. So it is kind of cool. Like you could imagine in a scenario where like we really want digital money to still exist. Yeah. I'm, there's like lots of different consensus algorithms out there. I'm glad, I mean, you have like mobile coin, for example, that has like a, a stellar type consensus where like you can hide those nodes really easily, right? I mean, that's like a small server. You have something like mass where like, you know, it's it's essentially a big hard drive farm. That's a lot easier to hide than like a ton of, you know, a thousand basics in a, in, a, in a warehouse. So I think the ability to sort of surreptitiously run consensus is kind of an interesting thing in general. Um, and I'm glad that exists. Uh, yeah, yeah, at Primitive, I mean, we've been looking at mass. We're, we're definitely keeping an eye on it. I don't think it would be surprising if we end up taking a position but we haven't yet thank you eric for uh joining us to talk about the uh, proof of capacity yeah so okay, thanks a lot man yeah okay thank you eric for joining us today if you are interested in MassNet and proof of capacity you can join the telegram uh, for the MassNet, or you can join our wechat groups remember to follow us and sharing this video thank you bye bye